Thanks very much, Andrea, and, uh, and good job on your behalf. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Bon après tout le monde. Je suis Jay Bradshaw. Everyone, I'm Jay Bradshaw. I'm president of Syngenta Canada. Et Canada. Et Canada. Et Canada. A local company that's focused on enhancing food security uh, by improving on-farm productivity and, of course, resource efficiency. You know, I'm particularly pleased that we have this opportunity afforded to us uh, this afternoon to uh, support the fireside chat as Andrea introduced it. This afternoon with uh, the young people, I was kind of concerned over the lunch period. I didn't see a lot of young people, but you've certainly arrived and that's a real pleasure to have you here. And to dialogue about feeding our global population um, and how youth, which is now here, agriculture innovation can and needs to come together uh, to make all of this happen. Recently I wrote an op-ed that was uh, actually in the Hill Times this week and that uh, it was entitled uh, growing the agricultural sector means growing the conversation about food and I think that's exactly what we're doing here uh, uh, today growing the conversation about food where it comes from the, the breadth and depth of the food and that'll help us uh, people understand about more about agriculture. In that same piece, I also know that if this country, our country, Canada, of course, uh, wants to seize one of the most promising opportunities to generate economic success and build its middle class, many more of us should be doing exactly that, talking more about food. This dynamic conversation about agriculture that we're going to start this afternoon on the panel. And it will drive prosperity for us from coast to coast to even our northern coast. So I'm glad that we're picking up the challenge. I think that was Crystal's challenge this morning through our discussions today. But here's a few other points that I wanted to point out in the article that, uh, that was in the Hill Times today. We've heard this a couple of times today. The importance of agriculture to this country should not be underestimated. Uh, agricult agriculture contributes over $100 billion to our gross domestic product. We heard that three times over the lunch period. And you know, in that gross domestic product, Canada and agriculture of over $100 billion annually, that's a larger gross domestic product than two thirds of the countries in the entire world. We are the fifth largest agricultural exporter, maybe the fourth, I think is what you said, Andrea, so we're fourth or fifth. Uh, with more than 2.2 million Canadians are working today in agriculture and agriculture food. So in Canada, regardless of industry, that's one in eight jobs. I really like what Michael said this morning about agriculture is really an employee powerhouse. Simply put, agriculture is integral to our country's well-being, whether that's economic well-being or otherwise. And the policies that we adopt as a country need to reflect this fact of how important agriculture is to our country. So it's no coincidence that people who are uh, advising our federal government, including people like uh, Dominic Barton, who's chair of the Minister of Finance Council on Economic Growth, uh, has highlighted the opportunities for Canadian agriculture moving forward. And I'd like to share a quote from Mr. Barton. The Canadian brand on food is good. Uh, we're well positioned, we're going to have 2.4 billion new middle class consumers in this world in the next 15 years, and you know what? They want to live and eat like we do. But more specific to the work that we do at Syngent, and of course others that are in our sector, our spirit of innovation has spurred a remarkable period of advancement in plant science and plant science technology, which will help ensure that we continue to make great strides in agricultural production, not just in the short term, but the near term and the very, very long term. At the same time I say that, however, agriculture is certainly not without its challenges, is it? And we want to continue to succeed and seize the opportunities that agriculture provides. We need to find solutions to these unprecedented challenges. And quite simply, uh, we need to grow more food, uh, use fewer resources, while protecting nature and improving life for people in rural communities all over the world, including our own rural communities here in Canada. So that's why for us at Syngenta globally and locally, we will launch what we call the Good Growth Plan. These are six global commitments that we put out in the public and we're asking the public to evaluate us on these six commitments and here they are. To make crops more efficient, to rescue more farmland, to help biodiversity flourish, to empower smallholder farmers around the world, to help people stay safe and to look after every agricultural worker. But we can't do this alone and we certainly know that Syngenta doesn't have all the solutions so that's why we're working together with growers and governments and NGOs and others who share this agenda. And that's why our dialogue here today about feeding our global population and how youth and agriculture and innovation all need to come together to make this very thing happen. And it's so important for Canada and it's so important for agriculture. So thank you.
Now, Andrea mentioned I was going to introduce the panel, and that, that's news to me. Um, so, Mike, if I can introduce the panel if I knew who they were, or um, this is where our program kind of broke down on you. I apologize for that. Does anyone would know the panel and would like to introduce them? or You know what? We're going to ad hoc here. Why don't, as individual panelists, you come up here and introduce yourself? I think it would be very appropriate. Would you like to come and introduce yourself? Oh, you have a microphone on? So let's do that. Why don't each panelist introduce yourself? And Andrea will facilitate that, and I'll get off before I embarrass myself further. <laughs> I'm actually going to pass it to Cameron to facilitate this one because he's the facilitator of this panel. So sorry that we had a little bit of a miscommunication there, but Cameron, I pass the floor to you, dude. Thank you. Uh, my name is Cameron Chiquette, and I'm a student at the Edwards School of Business. And my nickname is Chatty Cam because I love to talk. And maybe that's why I'm on the stage this afternoon, but uh, kudos to the Farm Credit team for getting three way better talkers with me. So I'm going to uh, help these three young ladies um, really navigate the conversation of the Global Food Challenge. I grew up on a farm in Saskatchewan, um, and one cool thing about me that I love to talk about is that I'm a triplet. And I have a brother and a sister that are the same age as me, not quite as good looking, but equally as smart. Um, <laughs> so with that, uh, Tanvi, go ahead. Yeah, so my name is Tanvi, and I'm a grade 12 student at Campbell. And how I got into agriculture was through Farm Credit Canada and their case study program at our school and one of our school programs called Business Club. And through which I got exposed to the different agriculture related careers. And after that, uh, I really got excited about it. And then I applied to attend a Global Youth Institute agriculture conference in Des Moines, Iowa, where I learned quite a lot about agriculture and still learning. So my name is Fatuma. I got involved with agriculture because of my um, business, 13 Social Enterprise, a business that has 13 teenagers that we teach um, 13 youth how to own a business and how to sell, produce product, how to do accounting, and we support local, we support local farmers, and we try to do as much as possible to just support our community. And well, you, you heard a little bit about me at the beginning, but I, I'm here as the, the uh, one on the panel that grew up in, in agriculture and I'm studying agriculture right now at McGill University. Um, yeah. So with that, now that you know a little bit about our perspectives, as you can see, it's a very diverse panel. Um, some of us have been in agriculture right from sleeping in the tractor um, to <laughs> uh, building social enterprises in inner city Ottawa. Um, so with that, we'll, we'll get right along. And my first question goes to Tanvi, uh, hopping right off of your introduction today. You're someone who just two years ago became involved with the agriculture industry. What caught your attention about the industry and what is really motivating your passion now? So I think as I mentioned in my intro about the case study that we did, I think as we were researching through the case, what really got that passion within me was learning about the job diversity because Usually at the high school level, students aren't aware about the different career paths within agriculture, whether it be technology and innovation, agronomics, agribusiness. And along with that, even realizing the potential within those opportunities, when you hear these projections about how the world population is going to be 9 billion by 2050, you realize we need young people to take action and take leadership in fulfilling this vision. And I think that's one of the other reasons too, the, the reward of being in this industry, the reward of supporting communities through your career and your work. So I think those are the key factors that really excited me about agriculture and have highly influenced my future decisions. Oh, that's fantastic. So before discovering agriculture two years ago, what did you know about it? And what are maybe some misconceptions that have been um, corrected since you become more educated and involved in the industry? I think I, uh, since when you are growing up on a city, you don't have that direction, direct connection with, uh, at the production level and, and with uh, farmers. So usually you're concerned about animal welfare. Like is animal welfare a priority at farms? Are they taken care of or are they just put into confinement? 
But I think fortunately last year when I went to uh, Global Youth Institute and had opportunities to connect with uh, farmers, I learned and hearing their stories of how they even wake up at 2 a.m. just to make sure that the cows are doing all the right. So listening to their stories uh, really helped me understand that they are they're passionate about their job and also care about the animals. And even along with animals, just environment in general. Recently in the last year with this huge focus on organic farming and eating healthy food, I think a lot of times are there a lot of pesticides in our food? Is the food are we eating is healthy? But a lot of times when you don't have that background exposure about how there's a lot of samplings, testing that go, like the food doesn't just come directly to the grocery store. They have to pass a lot of samplings before they make their way there. So I think understanding and connecting with industry leaders have really helped resolve those concerns and misconceptions. You mentioned in your intro that you were involved with Farm Credit Canada in a case study at your high school. And could you bring some context to that case study and then reflect on what kind of impact did that have on you in addition to your school classmates that you knew personally as well as your community? Um, so first, like the, case, the purpose of it was a case study that was brought to a class. Um, and then business club students uh, that were part of the business program were welcome to be a part of it as well. And we were divided up in teams about who brings up the best solution regarding raising awareness about agriculture careers among youth. And the team that uh, won was, they created the idea of egging challenge in which they said that at school we can have a fun activity in which we can um, just drop an egg on a person's head and just realizing like where we get our food from and the story that we have been hearing about. So uh, through that way, it, it raised awareness regarding the career path within agriculture in a, such a fun and engaging way. And students started to learn that, you know, there's these careers that everyone just thinks about, like accounting, marketing, or doctor, or law, but nobody really has uh, that conception and that connectivity uh, with agriculture if they're not grown up on a farm or in the city. So I think that case study had a huge impact in raising awareness about agriculture and agriculture-related careers in general. Thank you. So we have, we have Tanvi that's been involved with agriculture for around two years. And as you can see, she's sharp as a tack and is really keen on, on promoting agriculture. And I had lunch with Fatima um, earlier today, and she was telling me that she only emigrated when she was 17, um, which wasn't that long ago. Um, Fatima knows three languages, and she's involved with a social enterprise called 13 Moosley. So having grown up in the Netherlands and having come to Canada in the last couple of years, how are you involved with agriculture back home, and how has that changed since becoming involved with 13 Moosley? I've never been really involved with agriculture back in Holland, because um, I lived in a city. And with 13 Muesli, we learn how we produce our food and how we sell it to people and how we make it eat, eating ready. So with that in mind, I never, I always thought, where does it come from? What, how is it made? And one of our mentors told us that we were buying oats from a local farmer in, on a border of Quebec because we want to support local and if you support local, you help each other, you, you give money to your community. It just doesn't go up to a big corporate and never been seen again. It just keeps there, it just stays there. And I never realized how I didn't know what agriculture was in Canada, but now I'm so aware, I'm so honored to actually be here today and finding out that all these people are supporting agriculture. And I hope that more youth our age will keep supporting agriculture. I think that's everyone's hope, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to dig a little bit deeper on, on your perspective. We have so many different perspectives in the room today, and especially in the over 100 youth that we have. And, and youth value re really different things, and our values have changed as we've grown up. Um, as, as millennials, as we're called now in the, in the world. And Tanvi mentioned animal welfare, and we th hear things about climate change and pollution and, and good food and organics and GMOs and all of those buzzwords that we hear and those problems in our world. 
out of those problems or issues or buzzwords that you can think of, what really matters to people in our realm? Millennials. It's we should care about where food comes from, if we take care of it. If we don't take care of it, we don't eat healthy. Um, we will get sick eventually. It might not be just quickly, but it might take some time. And if we forget our values, we we won't get as we won't get a good quality of food. And would, that is very important to get your nutrition and everything. So that's why we should support agriculture as much as we can. So what do you think, as a young person, and it, I'm sure some of it would transfer to all young people in the room, what do you think young people value? What do you value in, in relation to agriculture and into your life as a whole? Um, just that I support the people who make our food especially. Um, a lot of uh, students, like our age, don't really know where their food comes from, and they don't really think about it because it's not their first priority. And I think that if they would um, teach that in schools, in elementary schools, more often, they would definitely care more and be more... Um, I forgot the word. <laughs> um, they, would, they would be more interested in, they would do more about it, and just get more involved with agriculture in general if they knew in elementary, if they thought if, you, if they teach it more in elementary, they would get more involved with it. Now, as I'm attracted to your really bright green shirt that has your 13 Social Enterprise logo on it, as I'm sure others are, can you tell us a bit more about that organization, how you became involved, and how you think technology is really going to change the work 13 Moosley does in inner city Ottawa? Mm -hmm. So, um, 13 Social Enterprise started with 13 teenagers back in um, September 2015. So me and my colleague Rita today, <laughs> um, we started with um, 11 others. We um, made Muesli. We created our uh, brand. We created our product in just 10 days. And this is our second year. We are mentors this year for um, others for other people who are joining Muesli. And we are teaching them what we have been through, what struggles we have been through, what um, interviews, and how to talk to people, how to talk to restaurant owners and store owners. And they are actually working, our new group is actually working on a new product, which is coming out on our own craft show in February, on February 25th. And they are very um, excited to show you guys, what they have made and what they have learned so far. And um, muesli, why we make muesli is because it's way more healthier than granola. It has no added sugars, it has no, um, it has more nutrition, nutrition, and it's just healthier for a person to, to eat instead of granola. What is muesli? So, <laughs> <laughs> So it's a um, so we have our three blends. It generally is um, raw oats, so it has more fibers, more nutrition, and we have our three blends. Two of those blends don't have um, added sugars, so it's just seeds, fruits, nuts, and those kind of stuff. And then one of our blends has chocolate chips, banana chips, so kind of the sweeter kind, which of course is our signature blend. And you can eat it in many different ways. You can add it on yogurt, you can put it on top of ice cream, and most of the time we just finish most of our products. <laughs> Sounds good. I, I asked that question because I didn't know what muesli was until about 10 minutes ago, so uh, I, I'm not sure if anyone else knew either. Um, so tell me more about the role or I guess the opportunity that you took advantage of in you know creating your own healthy nutritious product in inner city Ottawa do you think there's opportunities for people all over this country to simply grab an idea by the horns and run with it definitely it's it's not as easy as it looks but it's also not as hard as it looks it's just you have to know the right people you have to you have to have the energy to actually go forth with the idea and not just sit there once there's 
something you can't solve in one day. You can't just sit there and say, I'm going to give up. It's something you have to go through and just keep going, even though it's hard, even though you might not um, have the have the strength anymore. And yeah, I, you should definitely just try it. If you have an idea in mind, just go for it. It's pretty good advice. If you have an idea, just go for it. <laughs> Thank you, Priscilla. Andrea, as somebody that's going to graduate um, from university in April and having grown up on a farm, what are some of the experiences that you have had within the industry so far? And what's the, the biggest impact they've had on you? Well, as I mentioned, so yeah, I, I grew up on a farm and I, I've been involved in the 4-H program since I was a kid. And so, especially with the 4-H program, I was really able to kind of explore my own relationship with agriculture as a young person. And 4-H actually sent me on a lot of trips throughout Canada to, I, I, and through those trips I really got the chance to meet other farm kids from all over Canada. And that was really special because it allowed me to ask certain questions like, what are the ways in which agriculture is different all over Canada? but also what are the ways in which it's the same? You know, what's something that's true for a potato farmer in PEI that's equally true for a vegetable farmer in the Okanagan Valley in, in BC? Uh, and then beyond that, in 2015, I had the chance to go to Australia for the, a program called the Youth Ag Summit, and in 2016 to Switzerland for a program called the Thought for Food Summit. And so both of those questions allowed me to ask those both of those uh, experiences allowed me to ask the same kind of questions as I did with my Canadian farming peers, but from peers from an international community. So suddenly it was, what do a farmer from Kenya and a farmer from the prairies have in common? So my experience of the agriculture industry has been one that has been really driven by, by curiosity and I've been able to travel and to meet all kinds of people and, and to just reflect what are our differences and our similarities, and how can we use all of that to, to build a strong food sector? Awesome. Thinking down the road when we probably have kids of our own and are starting to get gray-haired, what do you think the agriculture industry is going to look like in 30, 40 years? Very different, probably. <laughs> but also, in some ways, really the same. Uh, and I think the things that are, are going to be the same about it is going to be the, the care and passion that, that farmers have always put into agriculture and, and always will put into agriculture, I, I assume. Um, but the reality is, is that 20 to 30 years from now, the world is going to look very, very different. And, and in the agriculture industry, we've got a lot of really big challenges facing us. You know, we have to gr feed growing populations, but with a lot less resources, a lot less land. So it's going to be a really big challenge. But I think also it's, there's a really big opportunity for us to, to rise up to that challenge. And, and already I, I think that we are in a lot of ways. There's a lot of knowledge and information available to us now more than ever. And, I, and so I, I see so many ways in which people are being innovative and, and thinking outside of the box to try and, and meet the challenges of the food industry. And I think the, that's where youth really has the opportunity to come in and shine, because youth happen to be the best at thinking outside the box. <laughs> and I think the reason for that is you know, mainly because we lack experience, but I think that that's a blessing in disguise because we don't see limitations. So we, c we have this unboundless imagination, and I think we can use that to look at the problems of the agriculture industry with fresh eyes and to see these problems and to think of creative solutions. And I think that if youth with their crazy imaginations work really closely with those gray-haired people that will still be around and use their, their wisdom and guidance, I think together we can, we can do th something really powerful. I couldn't agree more. It sounds like the colored hair and the gray-haired people might have to get along. So we'll, we'll work on that. So as 
kind of wrapping up, kind of bringing a close, what's the final message you want to give to the industry leaders in the room as well as the young people in the room as well? Well, I guess there's, there are two different messages because there are two different audiences. For the young people, I'd say, just go and do things, do something, do anything. Just use your crazy imaginations and take it whatever way that you're going to take it and get involved in the ag industry because you know, you eat every day and it, it affects you a lot today and it's going to affect you a lot in the future. So, so please get involved, know where your food comes from, ask questions, don't be afraid. Um, and in the case of, of industry leaders, I mean, the, the world is changing really quickly in ways that are really hard for us to predict right now. So there's a lot of uncertainty in the world. And I think that in the face of this uncertainty, all that we really have is, is one another and the ability to work together. And so I think that as we move into the future, um, industry is really going to be faced with the choice of, you know, do we continue going on as business as usual or do we use the opportunity that we have to invest in our agricultural communities and, and build a strong, resilient and robust industry together. And I would say that judging by the success of, of events like today and the eagerness of the industry partners to get involved in something like this, I think uh, I'm really hopeful about the answer to that question. Thank you. Well, that brings just a tiny close. I'm going to deliver some closing remarks right away, but a huge round of applause for these three amazing women. Thank you.